Welcome back. In this lesson, we'll continue getting set up for the rest of the course by installing and configuring our code editor or uh, integrated development environment, uh, IDE for short. Now, if you're already using an IDE like Visual Studio Code, uh, you can certainly skip over this lesson. But I wanted to include a walkthrough for those that may be uh, starting to use Terraform from scratch. Now, this conversation around choosing a code editor or an IDE and which one is the best is always tricky. Um, like most things, everyone has different requirements and different preferences uh, and different experiences with these tools. Now, one option I considered for the course and I would still recommend taking a look at is the AWS Cloud9 IDE. This is a cloud-based IDE that runs in your AWS account and you essentially get a full IDE that runs in your browser and you can access it from anywhere. Uh, there's a ton of helpful integrations with the AWS tools and services as well. Now, since I've already settled on using AWS as the uh, cloud platform for the examples in the course, I didn't want to layer on another cloud provider proprietary tool here. Uh, as we know, one of the core benefits of Terraform is uh, being able to have these cloud agnostic environments. So I didn't want everything in this course to be focused on uh, AWS tools and services alone. Now, if you're already familiar with AWS and uh, use that cloud provider for your job, or want to learn more about AWS and don't mind working with another AWS tool, uh, definitely check out the AWS Cloud9 IDE. If you decide to use the AWS Cloud9 IDE, uh, you can likely run this all within the free tier services from AWS, depending on the, the settings you pick for it. Uh, but do your research around Cloud9 to see if it makes sense for you. Um, and we'll be working with a few Docker images throughout the course. And if you decide to use the Cloud9 IDE, uh, just keep an eye on the EBS volume size. Uh, you may find you need to expand out that uh, EBS volume a bit, depending on the size of the Docker images being stored and uh, what you're using that Cloud9 instance file system for. Now, to keep the scope of the course in check here and not have 10 videos on IDE setup, I'll be using Visual Studio Code for the examples in the course, uh, but I'll try to ensure that you can follow along no matter what IDE you choose to use. Now, Visual Studio Code has been a very popular IDE in the last few years, and there's a huge marketplace for various extensions you can install to customize the uh, IDE's functionality to your use case. Based on a 2001 survey by Stack Overflow, over 70% of the uh, people responding indicated they were using Visual Studio Code as their primary IDE. And as we start into uh, 2023 at the time of recording here, uh, I expect that percentage to be much higher than that. Uh, especially with projects like uh, Atom being discontinued and many of those users switching over to Visual Studio Code. So just by the sheer popularity numbers here, I feel most people that will be taking the course will already you know, either be familiar with Visual Studio Code, and if you're not, it's certainly a great IDE to try out. Again, do your own evaluation and research of these tools and pick the one that meets your needs. Uh, but if you want to follow along with the lessons exactly uh, in this course here, uh, Visual Studio Code is what you'll see me use in the demos. So let me show you where to get the Visual Studio Code IDE if you don't already have it. Now to download Visual Studio Code, uh, you just want to go to the website here, code.visualstudio.com. And then on the main page, you should see some sort of uh, download option. Now, if your operating system isn't automatically detected here, uh, just pick this drop down and you'll see the latest stable download links depending on the operating system you use. Now, these are the most common installers for most people. Uh, but if you click this other downloads link, there's even more options if you want to get a trimmed down version of the Visual Studio Code specific for your system architecture. So for example, if you're using one of the newer Macs with the Apple Silicon chips, you can pick this option. And this will give you a bit of a trimmed down version of Visual Studio Code compared to the universal installer. So go ahead and pause here, go through the installation steps applicable for your system, and then launch Visual Studio Code and we'll resume. So at this point, you should have Visual Studio Code installed and opened on your system. Now, I just wanted to point out some extensions that will be helpful for the rest of the course. So if you click this extensions icon here on the left, and then go up to the search box, we just want to type in Terraform. Then we want to grab this extension from HashiCorp. And in your case, you should see a, a little install button here. Now, since I already have it installed on my system, it just has this disable or uninstall option. And you can see here in the summary and the feature list below, this extension that we add to Visual Studio Code uh, gives us a lot of syntax highlighting and code formatting, um, as well as auto-completion capabilities as well. Now, another popular extension, if you don't have it installed already, is the core uh, GitHub extension. So just type in GitHub in the search box again. You should see this uh, GitHub pull request and issues extension. So go ahead and click the uh, install button there. 
Now, Visual Studio Code has a huge marketplace for different extensions available. Now, if you're brand new to Visual Studio Code, I suggest going to the documentation here, especially the Getting Started Guide and uh, just getting familiar with the IDE. You can also check out uh, most of their popular extensions and uh, go to the marketplace as well. Then do a few searches to see if there's extensions for things that you use on a day-to-day -day basis uh, for different programming languages, or maybe you're coming from an IDE like Atom and you have plugins or extension you use with that IDE and you want to see if those same ones uh, exist for Visual Studio Code, you can search for those here. Now, as we go through the lessons in the course, I'll be showing you how to use the IDE and uh, specifically the Terraform extension a bit more. But I just wanted this quick video here to help those that are starting out with Terraform completely from scratch and uh, might be looking for a brand new IDE to use and uh, how to get started with it. So with that, a lot of our setup for the course is complete now. And in the next section, we'll really dive into uh, learning more about Terraform itself. So thanks for watching and see you in the next lesson.